Michael and Karen Sleever were dedicated high school teachers in Arizona. Mike has also been an active member of Cactus Picks for 15 years. Recently, both he and Karen made a life-altering decision. Um, my wife Karen and I decided, after being in public, public education for a combined 20 years, that we were going to leave um, the educational system and become students um, not in a traditional sense, but in a sense where we're going to go out and kind of travel and learn from other people. Um, so in May, we quit our jobs to pursue um, a life of, I guess, traveling nomadically uh, via eventually backpack and traveling from different homesteads and, and learning different skills. What led to this decision? Both of us had become a little bit uh, disillusioned with public education. Um, and being in it on a daily basis, we could see that we were not really, I guess, growing like we wanted to grow personally. I mean, we, we loved our job, we loved the kids, we just didn't love the bureaucracy that went along with it. And so one day I was bored at school uh, during my prep period and I typed in the Google. <laughs> I typed in, uh, I think, something like traveling the world on a shoestring budget. And uh, this site came up about working on homesteads talked to Karen about it. This was, I think, April of the previous year before we kind of left the following May and kind of made a plan. Tell us about your journeys and adventure. Um, well, we started in June of 2011 in a little homestead in New Mexico. A friend of mine, somebody I actually contacted after reading an article in the newspaper, he wrote about what he was going to do about homesteading. And so I was interested in it, contacted him and talked to him and became friends and he invited us out to stay at his place for that summer. So we stayed at his homestead which is just a hair under three acres in southwest New Mexico. And we spent the days pretty much just homesteading. So we would get up early about 6.30 and we would milk goats. There was two goats. And then we would check for eggs for the ducks and the chickens. And then we'd go have breakfast and then he usually had um, kind of the plan of the day whether we were going to plant or dig some garden beds. We built some structures. We worked probably four to six hours each day, and then we had the rest of the days to ourselves. So we did that for three months, and then we went down the road to another friend of ours, and we kind of house sat and uh, homesteaded their place for two weeks while they were on vacation and did similar things. What was the reaction of friends and family when you made this big decision? Pretty much the same reaction, really. Um, friends a little different than family. Um, if I start with friends, most friends were excited for us, yet they would say that the common phrase was, I really love what you're doing, but I could never do it. Family, a little more concerned in the beginning because they were concerned about the basic uh, general needs that we consider needs in our society. Uh, you know, what are you going to do about insurance if you get sick? Uh, uh, what, what, what are you going to do about money? How much money do you have? Um, how are you going to travel once you you know, leave the U.S. and ditch your car, and um, are you ever going to get a job again? So things like that. But as time went on and as people came or watched our blog or if they came to visit us and talked to us more, I think it kind of set everybody else at ease that we really weren't taking a big of risk as everybody thought we were because we're not going to starve. Um, I'm, I'm living in a very wealthy country. I have, I mean, middle class existence and I have friends and family, so and I have an education, so we weren't going to fall on our face if we if we failed, so to speak. Um, so I think people think we're taking a bigger risk than we actually knew we were. In your journeys, what have you learned? What was your self discovery? Um, that I really don't know all that much about how to take care of myself in a sense where if I had to really fend for myself, and I mean by you know I had to get my own food and my own water and build my own shelter, I would be SOL. Um, because like the, most people in our culture, I have to go to the store for my food and um, turn on a tap or buy bottled water and I would buy or rent a house or an apartment. Um, and so if, if you would transport me back to a different time or into um, a different location you know, outside of the U.S. and maybe a poorer country, I would be screwed. And I just felt that I didn't really have a connection to the world I live in because I'm constantly just, I felt like I was using the world a little more than actually living in it and then I felt if I'm really using it, am I living at all? So I think I've discovered that 
I have a lot to learn and probably not as much time as I would like. It would have been nice to dis <laughs> come across the self-discovery about 20 years ago. I needed to arrive at this place mentally um, and it was a long journey, but you know, that's what it all is, that's what it's about. Guy McPherson is the person that I stayed with for our first homesteading and he is a former professor at uh, University of Arizona and he wrote an article that was picked up by the Arizona Republic in their editorial page in April of 2008 and it was titled The End of the World as We Know It and my dad handed me the article just he just said you, you need to read this and I read it and it was about um, Guy was saying that he thought the industrial age was coming to an end quickly and that we would be in the post-industrial stone age within I think he said about a decade and I was like what? And he talked about the concept of peak oil, which is, you know, getting to a point where we don't use as much oil or we don't have enough oil um, that we would like to maintain the, the growth of our society. And so I looked at it, read it, passed it on to a couple of my friends that I worked with, and we called him up on a conference call. And we just basically sat there in silence while he answered our questions about the collapse of the ecosystem and capitalism. So it followed up where we'd email each other back and forth, and I told him our plans eventually, what Karen and I wanted to do. And he had left his job and started a homestead, and he said, you're welcome to start with us. And so we um, went out there, and he was very gracious, um, him and his wife and uh, the couple that they shared the property with and their young child, and he's become a good friend. WOOF is an acronym for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. And it's kind of a social network for people that want to go work on homesteads or farms and for people who want people to come in and work on their farm or homestead. And so what you do is you join the site and you contact via email a potential host, somebody who owns a farm or a homestead, and see if you can meet uh, what their needs are. So if they need somebody for two weeks to help put up some fencing and you happen to want to go to Utah to go do that or explore an area, you set it up with them and generally, you know, it's a trial period of a couple of weeks if they want you longer and it kind of works out for the both of you, then the relationship is continued. And so it's all over the world. There's thousands of farms in most of, you know, most every country in the world. And there's other sites that do it. One is woof.org. There's another one called HelpX. There's another one called growfood.org. So there's multiple organizations that really just put people in contact with each other who have similar interests in and needs. And so when I came across it, I thought, is this for real? Because you don't really have to pay for any food or any shelter. You just have to get your butt there and, and do some work. And it was real. It's going on since the mid-1970s. And it started in um, Great Britain. And it has grown dramatically. And uh, so it's a wonderful thing. We talked about going to Central America initially. Um, we were going to go and visit Belize. And we looked at going there because we'd spent some time in Nicaragua, which was great, um, but we didn't know um, how we would travel and what the traveling would be like between countries in Central America, and that, quite frankly there weren't as many opportunities as there were where we are going to go now. We're going to go to Europe instead. But I'd never been to Europe. Karen's been to Europe, and for example, there were probably only um, maybe a couple dozen farms at best in Belize to go to. Just more opportunity. Plus, I'd never been there, and I think traveling in Europe is going to be a little easier on our budget. More uh, choices to make in how to get between places. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next. We're probably going to leave within our, our deadline. We'd like to get out of here before March 1st. And uh, people always ask, well, how long are you going to be gone? I don't know. Um, oh, I think a long time. I don't. And what I mean by that, I think at least a year to two years is, is kind of the... Because once I get there and I spend the money to get there, I'd like to... You know, explore it all, and uh, so that that's going to take some time in figuring out visas and stuff like that. But people can follow us on our blog if they just Google "chasing a different carrot." Do the first thing that pops up on Google, and they click that link. We do a video blog on which I update when I'm on the road about every two to three weeks. Once in a while, we do a an essay as well. Mm -hmm.